Content aware scale does not have to be used just to make things larger or wider or bigger. We can use them to make them smaller too. And so in the example in the slideshow, I had this image of the fountain and I decided that I needed to use it for my project, but I wanted to use it as a square, but the picture I have is oblong or in landscape orientation. If we choose edit content aware scale, and then we slowly drag our handlebars in from the side. And so I could go a little bit in from each side, or I'm just going to go from the right hand side. I'm going to do it really slowly because I want to kind of see what changes occur. And as I'm moving it, it's kind of merging the picture together. It's overlapping areas Photoshop deems can be overlapped. And eventually I'll end up, if I go slowly across the screen, I'll end up with an image of the fountain. And it will be a square that I could use for my project. And so now I can compare the square to the fountain, and there's not a lot of noticeable change. It's a little thinner, but it's a much better than the example that we had in the slideshow. If you remember that example here, you can see that if I squeeze it, if I just drag it and push it to the left, um, I get a tall, skinny fountain. But if I use content and wear scale to do that, then I can move it across. And just like we did for the statue, you could make a selection of the fountain and say, this is the most important thing, try not to destroy this. Or you could make a selection of some aspect of the fountain. Let's say that the tower is the most important part. You could select that and say, don't mess that up, Photoshop. If you have to distort something, distort something around it. Moving on, we're going to talk about artboards next. And artboards are a little confusing. Uh, we use them a lot in Adobe Illustrator. We don't use them in InDesign. And in Photoshop, we have the option to use them or not use them and it usually gets a little confusing. And so uh, we need to use artboards for different things um, in Photoshop. Specifically, there's going to be a project in your class where you have to use artboards. But in general, you should start to become aware of when you would want to use artboards. A Photoshop document with artboards works differently than traditional Photoshop documents. The easiest way to think about an artboard is to picture a bulletin board or a flat surface that has many sheets of paper posted on it. One sheet might have an illustration you started last week, while another might have thumbnail sketches for a logo you are working on. Both need to be front and center on your desk since you're currently working on both items, but they are different, so you'll want to keep them separate. And so artboards are kind of like those individual sheets of paper that you have on your workspace. You're working on different things on different parts of your desk, but they all kind of go together, but you still want to keep them separate for, for, for some reason or in some way. Artboards in Photoshop allow users to work on multiple, usually similar things while keeping them separate. It is, this, it is as if they are on different pages, but since Photoshop and Illustrator can't handle multiple page documents, we use artboards instead. Before we jump over to Photoshop and we start demonstrating how you would create artboards, it's, it's important that you know kind of some things that are possible with artboards. And so first, each artboard can have multiple layers to it. And so on my example here, I have two artboards. You're only seeing one artboard in the screenshot, but on the layers panel, you can see I have two. And each artboard can have its own layers. And so you can kind of think of them as their own individual documents, but you can see them at the same time on your workspace. Artboards can have a colored or a transparent background just like your document would because each layer would have, um, would have its own color applied to it. The backgrounds for each artboard can be different and so if artboard 1 has an opaque white background, artboard 2 does not have to have that same background. You could have a transparent background for artboard number 2. Artboards can be exported to new files, and so if you're working with artboards and you're using it to kind of see what you're working on side by side, um, in web design they use artboards to come up with different layouts for different like um, platforms. And so if you're designing something for a phone, you might have an artboard for all the different types of phones and the aspect ratio of those phones that you might be designing for. Once you have those artboards, you could then export your artboards to new files. And so if I have 12 artboards, I could take artboard number 6 and say, that's the one I'm going to move forward with, and I can export it to its own individual document. It can be a JPEG, a PDF, a PSD file. There's actually a lot of options, and I'll show you when we jump over to Photoshop. And then it is difficult to control print settings when using artboards in Photoshop, so it is recommended each artboard be exported to its own file before printing. And so I would recommend exporting to a print file format before printing, and that could be a PDF or a, your own Photoshop file. A TIFF file would be an appropriate uh, print file format, etc. Artboards can be created when a document is created or by adding new artboards to an existing document, whether the existing document was created as an artboard document or without artboards. 
The new document dialog box is slightly different for all versions of Photoshop, so no matter what version you are using, um, I think it's about CS6 or newer, you'll simply need to find the artboards checkbox to create a document with artboards. And so the checkbox might be on the visual homepage when you're creating your document, or you might have it on a drop down menu like I have in my uh, screenshot here, where instead of choosing art and illustration or mobile app design, I simply choose that I want to create a document using artboards. Whatever version of Photoshop you're in, you have to figure out where that is because it changes. Um, it I don't want to say it changes every day, but it, when Photoshop is updated, they might change where that is or your view preferences on how you view your new document dialog box versus my um, preference settings might be different. And so it's your responsibility to figure out where that checkbox would be. And you can do it by just kind of scrolling around and looking inside your new document dialog box. You can also create an artboard by using the layer menu. And if you go to the layer menu, new, you can create a new layer, a new layer from the background, a group, etc. But you can also create a new artboard. And so in this example, I would be creating, maybe I'm creating a stationary package for something. And so I have an artboard for the letterhead, for the envelope, and now I'm making an artboard for a business card. And so I gave it a name and I gave it a size. I want it to be exactly the size of a business card. In this example, it would be three and a half by two inches. And you can see that when I create multiple artboards in my document, the layers panel will show me that I have a business card artboard, an envelope artboard, and a letterhead. Yours might say artboard one, artboard two, and artboard three. I just named mine. And then beneath it, you can see that each one of these has one layer. But they could have multiple layers. I could have 45 business card layers on the business card um, artboard. What is important is that now, visually, I could stack these separate air quotes pages next to each other so I can see them and see how they would interact or look look together. And so I'm using this as a print example with a letterhead, a business card, an envelope, and this is something very similar to what you might create in Adobe Illustrator if you were creating a stationary package. But you could do this for web design, right? So you could create all the different variations of the user interface for a phone, for an iPhone, an iPhone 6, an iPhone 10, Android devices, I have a Google Pixel phone, you could create one that says Google Pixel, I have the original, not the second version, etc. And you could create all the different variations and see them side by side. And so let's jump over to Photoshop and let's talk about that. And so I just have the same document open that I had for the, the previous video. And so I'm going to start by showing you how to add artboards to this document. So if for some reason I wanted to start working with artboards, I could go to the layer menu and I could choose new and I could choose artboard. And then this document that doesn't have any artboards would magically be able to be used with artboards. Now I don't like to do that. I don't like to have my document and then add artboards to it, I think it gets confusing. And so my recommendation is to start off by creating a document. If we choose File New, you'll get your new document dialog box and you'll see that this new document dialog box is different than the one in the slideshow because this is at school and the one in the slideshow I screen captured at home. And so all of your new document dialog boxes are going to be slightly different depending on your version of Photoshop or even the settings that you have that say what type of new document dialog box you'd like to see. But Either way, no matter what version you have, or anyway, um, no matter what version you have, you need to figure out how to create a document with artboards. And so if we're looking at the slideshow, the new document dialog box has a drop down that says what type of document would you like to create? And you'd say, well, one with artboards. If you have the new document dialog box that I have, you have to make decisions. And so most of the times you're going to find the artboard option either under the advanced tab, depending on your version of Photoshop, or up here, there is an artboards checkbox where it says orientation artboards. And no matter what I create now, if I choose to create with artboards, my document will have an artboard. I'm going to work with inches so that I could make, maybe I'm trying to make uh, postcards for something. And so I want to have maybe a four by six inch postcard. And so I'm going to do six inches by four inches. I don't know why. It, Give me that funky option the first time I typed it in. Um, it's going to be printed, and I'm going to choose 300 because that's standard or generic printing resolution. And then I'm going to leave it as RGB because maybe I want to print it on um, my Canon photo printer. And my Canon photo printer has 12 inks in it, and it's best to prep artwork for that using RGB. When I select OK, I will create a document that has an artboard by default. Right? There's my artboard. I could add lots of other layers. 
and I could modify it. Now, when I'm looking at it, it kind of looks like a document, but it is an artboard, and you can kind of see that better if I add more artboards. And so if I zoom out here, and then I try to create new artboards, um, you can, so see when I selected artboards, you have a plus sign, I could add a new artboard by clicking, and you could add lots of other artboards. I'm gonna undo that. I'm going to do it manually so I can choose the size. And so if you go to the layer menu and choose new, instead of creating new layers, I'm going to choose to create a new artboard. I'll zoom in there if you were writing down the steps to get there. And when you create a new artboard, you can give it a name. And so let's do the stationary example again. So I'm going to make a letterhead. I want it to be, and it's in pixels right now because a lot of times when you work with artboards, you're working with digital outputs. Um, but you don't have to work in pixels. I can make this 8.5 IN for inches by 11 IN and select OK. And you can see it's bigger because the first one we created, that was a... Um, six across by four inch tall postcard, right? And so I'm gonna move this, but you'll notice that if you try to drag it, it won't drag. Um, with the move tool selected, if you hold down the command or the control key, then you can move your artboards, which is kind of fun, and you can position them where you need them to go. And so maybe I'll move this one up to make it look nicer. You can create another um, artboard for your business card. So you can choose layer, new, and then artboard. And this time we can call it business card. And business cards are 3.5 IN by 2 IN. And then it, it put it on the middle of the screen. And so I'm going to turn off. Where did it go? I'm going to turn off the other one so I can see where it's at. And now I can turn it back on. If we change to the move tool, and then you hold down your command or your control key, we can take this and nest it underneath here. And you can make, let's move it down some. Maybe we'll put it over there. And then maybe we'll take this guy and put him over here so it looks prettier. And put him over here too. You could make an envelope if you want to continue with that. But now you have multiple artboards and you can work with them for your project. Um, each of your artboards can have its own layer on it. And so you can add multiple layers for each artboard. Just like pretend they're their own documents, but you're trying to work on them side by side so you can see how they would interact. You're going to have to do this for one of the projects in our class. And so for our class, uh, you have to choose to make either an album cover, like a vinyl record album cover, or you have to make a... Um, a book cover. And so when you're doing that, when you create your document, you're going to create a new document that has artboards. So make sure the artboards is selected. And then I'm just going to create one artboard and then I can always add more to it, right? And so I'm creating a design for print because we're going to print a book or we're going to print an album cover. Uh, I will make it with artboards and I want to make it a specific size. And so if this was a book, let's say, let's say that the book is six inches across and eight inches tall. I want it to be 300. I'm still going to leave it in RGB because our projects in ARC 1280 are going to be printed on a photo printer and RGB is, is an appropriate color mode for that particular printer. When I select create, I'll get one artboard and that's fine, but I need a front and a back cover and a spine. And so you can, you can duplicate this if you select the artboard and you choose the second tool down on your tools panel, it's the artboard tool. You'll get these little plus signs and you could say I need another one, right? So now I have two artboards. But you also need a spine. And so to create the spine, you could select the artboard tool and hit new. And then you could go back and you could select your existing artboard and you could make it thinner. Or you could create them using the layer menu, new, and create artboard. Whatever you do when you submit your project to us, you need to make sure that it's presentable, right? Like this doesn't make too much sense because I can't see if it's the front cover or the back cover and they're really far apart and so you probably want to stack them nicely and neatly next to one another and so now the right hand side would be the front cover then you'd have the spine and the back cover and you know you can design the entire thing all in one document but I can still keep the front, the back, and the, sides, the spine separate for whatever my output needs might be. 
Okay, artboard's a little hard to, to kind of grasp when you first start using them. And so I would like you to create a new document that has multiple artboards. And I would like you to rename those artboards so that they are for a business card, a letterhead, and an envelope. And if you don't want to do that, you can do them for an Android device, an Apple device, and a Google phone device, which is also Android. And you can pretend that you're designing user interfaces for web. Um, whatever you do, I want to make sure that you can create them and you can create them to the size that you need them to be because you will have to do that for one of the projects in Art1280. Um, please don't move on to the next video until you've gotten this down and if you have trouble, you should email your teacher because this is one of those things that um, you definitely need to know how to do and it's not one of those things where it will be optional to use it in the future.